Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat. What a great one we had today, talking about something we don't always talk about, which is FinTech in social media. I'm joined by my special guest. Please welcome Tina Powell. Hey Tina, how are you? Hey Madeline, I am doing great. Wow, we had such a fantastic chat. Uh, thank you so much for having me as a guest. Thank you, Manage Flitter. I got to tell you, the social ROI chat, Twitter chat was hot tonight. Woo! It really was. That that was just a fun discussion. And, and it is a little different talking about fintech and social media. We don't always talk about that. And uh, while I feel like so much of what we talk about uh, or talked about today applies to all types of businesses, it's still fun to kind of zero in specifically on fintech and get your two cents because you are the expert at this. So thank you so much. And before we dive in, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I run a social media consultancy called C-Suite Social Media, and I work only in the financial services business. So my clients are B2B and B2C, and I help them to figure out how to manage their entire digital portfolio, and that includes social media. Uh, they were slow to adopt, but now everyone in fintech is saying, yep, you know what, I get it social, digital, it's where we have to be. It's where our brand needs to be. And so I help them manage all of the different channels and strategies. I, I think that is so smart. And, and you're so right. I mean, like, everybody needs to be on board now. Like we're, it's just like when the internet was new, right? And like, getting a website and having your dot com is like, ooh, what's that? And, and people were really slow to adopt. And it's like, yeah, but you know, we reached that point where you're left behind if you don't have your website. And now we seem to be at a place where if you're not on social media, you will be left behind. Absolutely. Because I mean, look, just take a look around you, visit any public area, visit a mall, visit a uh, visit a, an airport, and you will see people on their phones and guaranteed that they are on some form of social media. That's where our attention is. That's where our community is. That's where our family of our children. And you know what? We have a healthy appetite for social media because we're sharing content. We're talking about it. We're talking with each other. Um, it's, it's really a way to connect with people because our tribes are already there. And so I'm just so happy that the, especially FinTech has, has kind of caught up to it because, you know, every social media represents a different type of community or circle, right? And you've mm -hmm, seen right. it. Uh, I mean, if you look at the map of social media, it extends beyond Twitter. It extends beyond Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, medium. There's micro social media networks that don't even that we don't even talk about. But yet at the same time, it's so, so important, no matter who you are. That's where you're that's where the people are. They're not on your website. I guarantee. It. Well, they're they're Sometimes they're on our websites. Right. But, right. Um, but if you want to engage and you want to connect in the way that we're connecting right now, I mean, look at us right now, Madeline, you and I have have been friends on Twitter for for a while now. Right. Right. And our, the first interaction was on Twitter. And now, look, we have we're talking to each other. We are people face to face. Right. Right. Virtually. How awesome is that? This is what brands and, and fintech firms need to take away. The, the, the object or the goal of social, I always say, is to drive an offline event. This is just part of the communications. It's part of the, it's part of the customer journey. But it's a great journey. It's a fun journey. We had an awesome time today on social ROI. It was so much fun. And, and I have to say, you, one of your, you had so many great tweets today. Awesome tweets. And for anybody watching this, if you did not participate live during the chat, be sure to go over, look at the hashtag social ROI. Lots and lots of great tweets. I love one in particular where you had said, um, stop trying to use social media to sell them. You said this in all caps. I love that. There's a reason it's called social media and not sales media. I love that. That That's like one of the best takeaways from this chat because it's so well, true. Yeah. And I can't take credit for that. When I heard it and I forgot where I heard it and I was like, exactly. It's not sales media, media it's social media. And here's where it is. I see such, 
it is unbelievable, especially on LinkedIn. And I kind of, you, you know, you've heard the expression, you should really date, <laughs> you know, and social is a, a great way for you to enter into a relationship to get to know somebody. And so when you try to, when you make a connection, whether or not that it's on Twitter that you start following, right, or, or even another social network, even if you friend someone on Facebook, and then you automatically say, Hey, Madeline, great. Oh, it's, 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 you know, it's great to meet you. Would you become my client? Would you buy my stuff? Right. And that's what people are doing. They're, they're I know. looking to pet. So they're like hungry peddlers, right? Like yes. buy, buy, buy. No, it's, it's social is a communications vehicle too. Don't use it to push your product down people's throats because they don't want to buy it. Yeah, LinkedIn is, is, for me personally, like I can't stand the inbox because even today I still get bombarded with so many salesy people thinking that just because um, we're on LinkedIn together that they can just start pushing things. I don't even know them. It drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's just, it's, be, it's beyond it's beyond me. Clearly, they're utilizing the medium in a way that was not intended to. And so, you know, you've also heard the expression marketers ruin a good ruin a good thing. Right. Gary right. Chuck has said that. And you know what? He's absolutely right. The reason is that that email filters got so um, they got so specific, right? Now we've got like the, the regular inbox and our inbox is divided. And so marketers figured out that, hey, if I use LinkedIn, not only will I override the inbox, but I'll also to get two messages for one, I'll get the notification in, in LinkedIn, which now we see it on the bottom part of our screen. And then I know it will get to their Gmail or wherever that LinkedIn goes. So they've taken that principle in Instead of using it to build an authentic connection, to get to know someone, they go automatically and shove the literature down the... Down. It, can you imagine like walking in a trade show and, and, and just no. somebody hands you like a big sack like, here, Madeline. Oh, it's great to meet you. Hey, you know, glad you're here at this trade show. Here, take yeah. all of our stuff. Right. And so they need to really think about use social media just you know, sparingly, please spare the other person that, that sales process because they don't want to go on your sales journey. Not right, right. now. Maybe exactly. It, it should be like, hi, let's get to know each other. That's why at the start of the Twitter chat, I like to spend the first 10 minutes and everyone's just saying hello and, and talking to each other and, and enjoying each other's company instead of going right to the heart of the chat. You know, just want to just spend time on that relationship part which makes it more fun, more enjoyable. Yeah, we did. And I love the way that you did that. Look, we found out that there were people from England. We had Houston today. We had all that we had all over from all over the place, right? What a great way. I think that that's such a great takeaway, Madeline, that, you know, everyone listening here, this, you know, no matter what platform, whether or not it's Twitter, which you did a great job, take time to just welcome your audience say hello to them, ask them how they're doing. You would do the same thing on email, right? Yes. Uh, right, exactly. So why is all of a sudden the rules for social media so different? I've never understood that. I know, it, it really makes no sense. And I don't know like who went around telling everybody do this or copy me because you know, like this is the way to go because it's not. Uh, social is to be social and then everything else falls into place. I always tell people, have a great looking Twitter profile, have a great bio, great photo. So that way, when you're communicating with someone, you don't need to be salesy. If they're interested and want to learn more about you, they'll go look at your profile. They'll go to your website. Yeah. And we talk about using social media as a way to build that top of uh, mind awareness. And right. so it might be that someone who has a, a legitimate interest in what it is that you sell and what it is that you do. However, for one reason or another, they're just not willing. They're just not ready to buy. That's all. That's, 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 that's how it, that's how the journey needs to be, uh, needs to be treated. It is a, it is a customer journey and each customer journey is different, but at the same time, it evolves over time. And it starts with just 
you know, it, it starts with the, with the, with the pleasantries of just being human. There are people behind, behind the accounts in most cases. <laughs> right. Even with big brands. I mean, you're still, you're at the end of the day, you're talking to a person. Yeah, exactly. Right. It may right. feel like it's a logo, you know, I'm talking to, to a logo, but you're really, you're talking to a person. And, and I don't know if you notice, um, right before we jumped on here, I was looking at my notifications on my Twitter real quick. And uh, at the beginning of the chat, uh, somebody had mentioned the Robin Hood app, which I absolutely love oh, and have yeah, used. Right. And they saw my tweet when I had replied to that guy and said how much I love Robin Hood. And they came back and did a cute little gif, you know, like, you know, thanks for the love. And I'm like, wow, like how cool that they're listening, they're paying attention, and they're, you know, being part of the conversation and using a gif. I, I love when big brands use a GIF to express themselves. I think that's so awesome. Yeah, I think, and I'm just plugging this in because of course I'm running out of battery. Uh-oh. So no, it's okay. I, 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 um, I got it. Um, but that's why I've been uh, so quirky in the movements before. Yeah, I, I agree. Like in the beginning too, as far as like the brands went, they were really scared about social. They were, they were, right. they were afraid about showing any type of like, I don't know, even hum even humanity, it had to be, it had to be perfect. Um, it, it, it didn't, it didn't feel right now. Brands are starting to, you know, experiment and get a little bit out of the box. It doesn't mean that you, you can still be out of the box and be on brand. And that's the thing, it, you know, you, 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 it, it, it evolves, your comfort evolves, but the, the use of emoji, the use of gifts, um, the, the, the use of comedy. Um, there's, there's so many things that you can do with your messaging on social media to make it more interesting and inviting. But at the end of the day, it still can be on brand. You, you, you don't need to, and nor should you ignore the tenets of your brand and what you stand for. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. So today's topic uh, was why fintech companies should be on social media. And again, this is something doesn't get brought up a whole lot. And so I th just thought this would be such a great conversation for today. So what I'd like to do is uh, ask a couple of the questions we did on the Twitter chat. So now we can get your expanded thoughts. We can go beyond the 280 character limit and hear what you have to say. So let's jump into question number one. Uh, do you believe fintech companies should be on social and why? Yeah. So it was so funny because as I were preparing my answers today, I was like typing voraciously like 25 different things. There are so many reasons. OK, but let's talk about it for especially if you're fintech. Right. I'll, I'll talk about a couple of the, the reasons that I think. First of all, it's the age of 2019. By definition, if you're technology driven, you need to be relevant. And if you are not on social you will not be relevant with the um, assuming that you are going to try to connect with the people who want to use your technology. So you need to be on social media. Again, that's where the attention is. That's where you're going to find your audience. That's where you're going to start to build your brand, build, build awareness for what it is that you do and, and start to make those meaningful connections. Again, especially on Twitter, I feel so strongly about fintech firms using Twitter because there are people behind there are people behind the brand. Those might be investors, those might be VCs, those might be potential centers of influence, those might be prospects, they might be sponsors, they might be um, partners of some sort. So I can go on and on, but it's really it is absolutely essential. Um, to be on social. With that said, with that said, it's also important to say, hey, concentrate initially, especially if you're a startup, you're a fintech startup, which a lot of my clients are right now, and they want it all. Everybody wants it all yesterday. Oh, sure. We need, we need Twitter and we need Facebook and we need LinkedIn and we need YouTube. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> one channel, right? One channel at a time because it's hard. It's a challenge. It, it used to be a lot easier when you and I were talking years ago and telling everybody that uh, this isn't a fad. This is really not going away. Right. right. And there, 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 there is a value to, to being on, on social media. You might not understand it right now. 
some of those companies dismiss it and now are getting um, getting up to speed. And you tell me, Madeline, building an audience now on social media feels more like a pay to play than yes. right. Trying to do it organically is time and labor intense, uh, intensive. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. You know, times have really changed. It, it's always evolving and, and it's always going to be that way. Um, I remember back in the early days of social media, you know, they used to be like, okay, this is a way, you know, you, you work your, your sites and, and get noticed and get seen. And then it shifts and then it becomes other strategies and it's just always changing and evolving. And we're in a time right now where if you want to get seen and heard, you got to put some dollars behind it. And uh, you still got to have good strategy, still got to put some time and effort, but you know, you got to spend some money, pay to play. Like you said, you know, it's, you know, we all had it for free for really good, you know, for a long time, organic ruled, uh, organic still can rule, but it's a lot harder and you got to work really smart to make that work. So a lot of people are, are really having great success with Facebook ads, LinkedIn, YouTube ads, and even Twitter ads. Yeah, Twitter ads, I have to tell you, I've had great success for uh, Twitter ads with my uh, with my clients and even just being on Twitter promote mode as well, too. You know, paying ninety nine dollars a month uh -huh. you know, does make does make a difference. But the great thing about Twitter ads that a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people who haven't used them might not realize is that you know, you can pick your, your highest performing tweets and, you know, you have the content already there for your ad and right. you already have the metrics to tell you, okay, you know what, this ad or, or this tweet has resonated. And so it's, it's a no brainer. And not only that, you can pick that you can define, which of course I'm talking to the Twitter expert, but for those of you who don't know that one of the best features about Twitter ads is you define the lifetime budget. Again, see what $100 looks like. See what $200 looks like. You're not going to go over that threshold because you can be absolutely intentional and specific about how you run your ads, how much you spend, when you spend it, where you spend it who you're promoted to, if you could only see the back end, right? A lot right. of these firms, if they saw what you and I see, I'm telling you, it would blow their minds. Absolutely. I love that. That's so great. Um, I want to jump over to question number five. I really like this question a lot and, and want to get your expanded thoughts on this one. What tips would you provide to a fintech company seeking to improve the way they interact with their audience? Yeah. So the first thing that I said today is to stop and listen. You know, a lot of brands, we rush and we want to tell people how great we are, what we do, what we stand for, our passion, our purpose, our why. Thank you, Simon Sinek. You know, and all of these things are really super important. But social media comes should come from a place of service. It should come a pla from, a, from an authentic place within your heart. Uh, and, and I don't mean to sound so... Um, uh, I don't know, lovey-dovey about the whole thing. But, you know, you really have to care for your audience first. And the way that you show that people that you care is you listen and you learn and you find out more about them and the things that they care about. So, you know, I think if you're going to engage about your, if you're in, going to engage with your audience, number one, understand them first. Understand what topics resonate. What are they engaging with? What, what, what questions are they posting? Today during our social ROI chat, for example, we found a lot in the short time, in the short time that we had, we found out a lot about our audience. Right. Right. If you go back to the transcript of just our social ROI, you would learn a great deal of, of uh, intel from that. In addition, that can inform your content creation strategy, your curation strategy, when you approach, how you approach, maybe even in what medium. Um, there we had, um, uh, and I forgot her name because uh, there was so, Joanna. Joanna yes. produced like the the most incredible uh, tweets today, and she had like the cutest emoji in front of each, um, right. in front of each tweet, right? 
how awesome with that. If, if we, you listened and if you were a fly on the wall today for the social ROI um, uh, tweet chat, then you would see, hey, you know what? That was really fun, um, fun way to, you know, show and, and be expressive. That's what companies need to learn. Sit back, observe, and, and then see what resonates. Try different things, but um, definitely figure out who your audience is before you start to bombard them with, with stuff. I love that. That is so great. And that, that makes me think of uh, another question to ask you. Uh, and we'll start wrapping it up because I mean, I mean, we yeah. can sit here and talk all day about this stuff, we but we, we, had to, we had to keep it pretty brief. Um, what tools do you like? Do you like just in talking about like social listening, which you're, like what we're talking about right now, like I love to use Hootsuite for social listening. I think that works so great. Uh, what tools do you like using for social listening? And just what tools in general are you recommending to your clients for, for yeah. all social? Uh, all aspects of social. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. So yeah, I love Hootsuite too. And for some clients, um, uh, uh, Sprout Social, I'll tell mm -hmm. you where I use That's a Sprout good one. Social, um, where engagement metrics really, really matter and where you might need to aggregate what um, social looks like or what social engagement looks like from point A before you start like a campaign or some sort of an initiative. And for me, being in a compliant driven environment, um, I was part of what I call like a social media SWAT team. All of the tweets went into a queue within Sprout Social. Every single message was pre-approved before it was released. Wow. You know, and for fintech, especially all you fintech, all you fintech brands, uh, CEOs, um, everybody on this on this call um, understand that, yes, social and the platforms are, are more technologically advanced and they are in keeping with what you need to do, how you need to run your business. They've now augmented around that. Um, so, again, working in a compliant environment, tools like Sprout Social, um, Hootsuite, Tweet Deck is great if you're at a conference and where you might be monitoring not only ha one hashtag, but also to the accounts of certain people. So, you know, sometimes the environment will dictate, but there's a lot of great tools. Um, I also recommend having just like, you know, regular Google alerts on, on your name and stuff. So even when, when things get mentioned on social or somewhere else that, um, that, that, you, that you know. Yeah, those okay. are all really great tools for sure. Um, this is really awesome. I mean, there's so much that we could cover here. I feel yeah. like we're just scratching the surface, right? Yeah. Um, but this has been so great. What what ways can people get in touch with you if they want to like chat with you more? Sure. So you can come to, well, first of all, follow me on uh, Tina C. Powell. I'm on Twitter. Uh, the, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, all the social, uh, all the social media networks. And of course you can email me, Tina at C-Suite social media. Um, you can direct message me, but only if we follow each other. So if you do have a question about anything that we talked about, uh, you should definitely reach me via email. My website is csuitesocialmedia.com. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you, Madeline. Today was a wonderful uh, experience. I had a lot of fun. Um, and I hope that it provided value in the same way that you've provided value to me. And again, thank I've you. enjoyed learning from you and uh, being part of your tribe. So it's, oh, it's, you're so it's kind. Great fun today. Thank you so much, Tina. That is so sweet of you. I really appreciate that. This has been really awesome. So much great information on the chat today and then also here on the after chat. So thank you so much for your time. I definitely encourage everyone to go check out your website. And if they're not following you on Twitter, they should do so immediately. How's that? Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Thank okay. you. And for everybody tuning in, we'll be back next week. We'll do it all over again with another guest. So until then, I'll see you guys out on Twitter and mm -hmm. here on Facebook as well. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Thanks, Tina. Bye. Bye.